Hi, this is the first in a short series of videos about the amazing genealogy program Gramps. The website itself has got lots of downloads of wiki, examples and extras, so explore it please, it's a great resource. This video will be a tour of some of the main features of the program that I use. In a future video I will show you how I enter data and use it every day. Firstly, some explanations. This video uses Gramps 4.1.1-1 on Exabuntu 14.04. Don't be worried if the icons are not what you see, as they can vary between distributions and themes. Regardless of that, there will be similar icons to those shown here. Next, I'm not a trained genealogist. I just thought I'd have some fun sharing my experience of my use of Gramps over four years to record my family. There are genealogy standards out there that you might want to investigate. And like all software, there are several different ways of choosing the same end, so don't be afraid to experiment. So let's get started. Here I've opened Gramps after a fresh install. There's no data in it. So to help with this tour, I recommend we import some sample data that comes with Gramps. Search for a file. Um, called data.gramps on your system. Uh, here under Ubuntu I found a copy of it at usershare.gramps etc and you'll notice as well I've now copied it and the whole of the directory over to uh, a demo folder on my PC. So here under uh, the graphical file manager you can see all the files that I've transferred across. Data is the uh, file that's got all the information in that we need. So let's create a new tree and we'll call it um, test tree and we'll now open that. So as you can see from this gramplet here there are no people in there at the moment. So now let's import We'll go to this demo database, as you can see, there's the data there, um, and let's import that now with import. And off Gramps goes, and imports, and it tells us what it's imported, so we can now close that down. So let's explore the interface. First thing though we should do is to tell Gramps where all the media are. So here we've got under general we've got path for media. So as you saw I put all my media into the demo data demo folder. So here we are. I've updated that and put that in there. We can now just confirm that by looking at one of the people and you'll see there's a picture um, that's now been attached to the uh, individual. So let's go back to the structure of this and talk about the dashboard. It's a very flexible area for you to customize. Initially you've got two gramplets up on the screen, certainly worth looking at the belt the Gramps one, um, and over here on the right you've got some to a top surnames gramplet. You can do whatever you want with this. Um, you can collapse that one down and you could add another gramplet. So let's say we'll add the age stats gramplet. And this now gives you um, some information about the age distribution of the people in the database. Uh, gramplets are little things that uh, are pieces of code that um, have been created by the team but also by individuals just wishing to contribute to the project. The People tab is a busier screen. Right hand and bottom bars are very useful, but for now I'm going to turn them off. In this view, you can see surnames listed on the left, in a collapsible tree view. This is very useful, particularly when you've got an awful lot of people in your tree. Collapse them with the chevrons and expand them in the same way. Right click, you can expand all the nodes and let right click again, you can collapse all the nodes. 
For now, though, let's go back to a simpler view and we'll go to the people view, clicking this button here. And this is it in a straightforward list. You scroll up and down to find people. You can also change what's displayed on the screen using this button here. Configure the active view. Add or delete columns to suit your preferred display. The top toolbar is fairly explanatory. The tooltips appear as you hover over, so adding a new person, editing a person, deleting a person, etc. And here's a quick example with tags. Click. If I want to tag several people, let's say for instance three people I know are mariners and I want to apply a mariner tag to them, I've selected three people there using the control key tag those people with the tag mariner and that's it done if I click off them you'll see that they're highlighted in a different colour because that's how I've asked them to be displayed using the tag menu the right hand toolbar as I say is a very powerful thing here for example I can show immediately I can filter it to show only those people that have got the tag mariner on click find they're the three people I have. Reset the display and find everyone comes up. If I want to find all people with the letters A and A in them, such as Anna and Hannah, I can press find and you can see I've come up with Anna and Hannah and Shermanna in my display. So very flexible way of displaying reset everything back to normal with the reset button and find and finally let's go back to the the bottom bar here it's great to show an overview of the person you have highlighted in the area above the tabs that have been bold have got information in them those that aren't don't so for example here we've got Michael Smith a bit of an overview on this screen here there's some of his events here some children and other references to Michael finally and probably most importantly double click a person and you come up with their detailed editing screen now this I'll talk you through in a future video. The relationship screen is also a, f a wonderful screen I think and it starts by showing you the relationships of t to the person that you had selected in the previous display. So here we have Michael and you can get summary information from here. You can also edit Michael at that point but from here you can also see that his parents, mother and father, you can see his siblings, you can see his marriage and you can see his children. As you'll note these are collapsible displays which is helpful. If you've got 10 siblings this is going to go off the bottom of the screen so helpful to be able to collapse and expand as you need to. If you click on Edwin Michael Smith's spouse you can see here it shows her marriage but it shows no parents because we I don't have any information about her at this point in time but if we do find out her parents we can easily add her parents from this screen move up here add a new set of parents to the active person so click that and then we've got the family screen come up which we're about to come to and shows the father the mother and the children and Janice has automatically been added into this family as a child even though we don't yet know who the parents are so great screen let's move on to families this is a familiar screen now this time it adds father and mother relationships and 
key date on the front. Again, you can configure the screen to suit yourself. If you double click Michael, Edwin Michael, you get up the screen that shows that family unit, shows the father, the mother and the children and all events associated with that family unit. Again, the detail of which we'll come to in a future video. Gramps has several ancestry charts. Here is Michael's ancestry. You can see information here about him, but we can also click on his grandfather and the chart moves further on to show more of the ancestry. There are other charts to view from here as well. You can go to a fan chart or to a descendant fan chart by clicking these buttons. The events screen follows a similar format. Here we have on display every event entered into the system. We can filter, sort and explore all these events using the right hand bar again as previously done. So you might want to example list all deaths before 1900. So create the filter to do that and that will limit the display. Similarly, if you want to look at an individual event, double click it, <coughs> brings up the detail, tells you that this is a birth event, this was when it occurred, this is your descriptive text you've added about the event, it's about the birth of Martin Smith, this is where the event took place. Again, these tabs here tell you that there is some information under references and what it is is telling you that this event is actually attached to the person called Mardle Smith. Let's move on to places. Places describe where an event took place. In Gramps we build a list of places where events took place. We can use that place then as often as we need to without retyping it. So in Martin Smith's case, his birth event was at Gladsax in Sweden. Here we have the place entry for Gladsax. The bar gives us an overview of the information. And the references here show that Gladsax is referred to in quite a few events births and christenings and marriages of different family members and we can go to explore each one of those from here should we want to. Let's move on to sources, citations and repositories. This is how I like to think of repositories, sources and citations. If I go into the county archives, pick up a book and turn to page 48 where I find information relevant to my research, then the repository is the county archive, the source is the book name, and the citation is the page number, possibly the line number. This sample data doesn't have that exact example, but if we look at source number three here, and double click to edit it, we can see here that this source is a birth, death and marriage source and click on this tab here repositories will see that we found this source in the New York Public Library and that it has a citation of it citation zero. If I click here to edit that reference I will be able to see that it is a reference to the birth record for Edwin Michael Smith. In terms of detail, we go to the repositories here, and there's the New York Public Library repository we've just been referring to. Again, double click, brings up the editor for that, and you can put in lots of information about that repository. Here we've got its address in New York. We could enter in a web address if we had an online address for them, etc. We can also see that from the New York Public Library, we have so far looked at 
two sources of information. Media shows all the media that we have got linked to our database. The media can be anything. Um, it could be a picture or it could be a scanned document. And finally notes. Notes are often attached to something but not always. If you look at this note 3 we'll see that here we've entered in some text as a biography about Halmar. From here we can see that it's referred to Halmar Smith and we could edit Halmar straight from here. Because I've got this note open I'm now going to close it but we'll go back to Halmar which who we opened from there we'll see that this is his detailed record and you'll see over here this tab is highlighted because there's a note attached and it's the note we've just come from you click on that note you can have several notes attached to it but this note was the one we've just been looking at and double click brings it up here different ways to get to notes and how they may be used okay so there are three final things for this session there are many things to explore on this menu bar at the top and one of the most useful things to do is the reports up here you can generate a text report for example for many different things but let's say you did a complete individual report for Michael Smith you can set it up to generate a PDF file off it will go produce that and will then open up in your PDF viewer a report that should you wish to you could print off I find the most useful report is this web page, the narrated web site. Now, I'm not going to run it now, but it's a fantastic way of putting everything in your database, should you wish it to be, out into a website. And what I do is I create a website that I then put on my smartphone so that when I'm out doing research, I've got the whole contents of my Grams database on my smartphone and I can check what I know and what I don't know against it. Fantastic. We would be irresponsible if we didn't export all of our data regularly to a backup. So follow this little wizard, takes you through and exports everything out including media should you wish to an XML file that will allow you to recover your database. Do it as often as you can. You can also back up your database at a file level or operating system level should you wish to. And finally, do remember to close Gramps down properly with Family Trees Quit. Don't hit Abandon, hit Quit and that will close down Gramps properly. This is the end of this video. Hopefully the next video will take you through a detailed session of entering data into a blank tree.